Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the HP Envy X360 convertible laptop from 2021 and see if we can just give it a little bit of an upgrade. So this is actually my personal laptop, guys, uh, and I love it to bits. It does everything I need to do, but unfortunately, one of the things I'm struggling with is the small amount of storage that it comes with out of the box. Uh, this version only comes with a 250 gigabyte SSD, uh, so we're going to upgrade that in this video. And unfortunately, that is the only thing that can be upgraded on this laptop. Um, you can't upgrade the memory or the processor or anything else, just the storage. So we're going to do that today. Now, I've bought this uh, Crucial P2 SSD. Uh, it was very reasonably priced on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below to this and some other alternatives. It's going to take me up to 500 gigabytes of storage rather than the 256 this came with. Uh, now, to undertake this upgrade, it's very simple. You just need a couple of screwdrivers. Um, I'd recommend getting something like this. Um, this is just a, a screwdriver set that I've had for years. It has a variety of different heads on it. Uh, you will need to get a kit with a Torx T5 head, and you'll also need a small crosshead or Phillips head as well. Uh, and the only other thing you'll need is some sort of prying tool to, to separate the parts of the chassis. And I like to use uh, guitar plectrums for this. You may have seen some of my other videos that I use guitar plectrums to do this. You can buy uh, specific splunging tools or prying tools on Amazon as well. I have those linked below. Uh, but in my experience, these work just as effectively and, and they're relatively cheap. You can probably borrow them off someone if you know someone that plays a guitar or another stringed instrument. So let's go over the uh, the upgrade process. The first thing you need to do uh, before you do anything to the laptop itself, guys, please make sure that you back up any data uh, that's stored on your laptop because when we change out the SSD, obviously all that data is going to be on the old SSD and not the new one. So back up all your data onto a USB stick and once you're happy that everything is backed up, shut down the laptop and then we're ready to go. So the first thing to do is turn it over now with the laptop turned over, you'll see you have two Torx head screws here. These are your Torx T5 screws, um, but there don't appear to be any other screws. Uh, well, in fact, there are. Uh, what you need to do is, is peel off the uh, rubber foot from the back end of the laptop here. Now mine's gonna come away very easily because obviously I've done this before while prepping the machine and working out how to do it to show you guys. Um, don't worry too much if the adhesive stays on here. Uh, when it comes time to reseat this, you can just use some super glue or something just to get it on there. Uh, and you can see now there's three additional screws. These are Phillips screws. I don't know why they just didn't use the same torque screws as they used at the front. But we've got two at either end here and then one just off center. So go ahead and remove all the screws. Now with the screws removed guys, um, there's nothing actually physically holding this bottom panel onto the rest of the chassis other than some clips that hold the side panel onto the bottom panel here. And those are located all the way around the side. And this is where your plastic prying tools or your guitar plectrums come in handy uh, because what you can do is just use those to just try and pry those two parts apart. And then once you've managed to get it in there, just push up slightly and you'll see and hear a little click. And then what I like to do is get another plectrum, leave that one in situ and try and find the next clip. It can be a bit fiddly. Please, whatever you do, guys, do not use a metal screwdriver for this because what you will do is scratch your laptop to pieces. There we go, the next clip's gone. And this will just take a little bit of time uh, and a little bit of patience. Don't, uh, don't be too rough with it because you'll find if you do, you could break off some of those clips and then you won't be able to get the cover back on properly. Just try and go around there, you see another one's gone. And the further you get around, the easier you'll find it is to try and pry this back panel off. And if you find you get stuck and it won't release, just go the other way and try that. And you'll find the more of these clips actually pop off, the easier it is to get the whole thing off. And you'll reach a point where you can just lift it off. This one's being a little bit stubborn. This is one of the worst laptops I've had to work on for this. Uh, you expect some resistance, but this one is particularly bad. You have to be very careful not to bend the metal frame. And 
There we go. And you'll reach a point where then you should be able to just get your fingers there and gently, very gently, guys, just start to pry that cover off. Too much pressure and you will damage it or crack it. We certainly don't want that on a laptop this nice. There we go. And then eventually it'll release. You can take that and just put it to one side. And from here, we can access all of the internals of this laptop. So let's talk about what we've got. This large section here is, of course, the battery. Uh, and then the other half is dominated by the motherboard. Now, this is your, your cooling fan and the heat sink underneath. Then you have your heat pipes that come around here and go to your CPU. And then your memory is soldered onto the motherboard over here. And unfortunately, that can't be changed. What we can change, however, is the storage, which is this block here. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to take the advice I always get given when I do these videos to disconnect the battery. People generally get very angry when I forget that step. So you just use one of your pry tools to gently push the battery connector out of its socket. And once it's free, just pull it out. And now we can work on this laptop without any fear of short circuiting anything or damaging anything, which is the important thing to do. Do remember, guys, to plug that back in. Otherwise, you'll find yourself scratching your head and uh, pulling your hair out as to why your laptop doesn't work anymore. Um, so the next thing to do, guys, is we need to get access to this metal part here. Uh, before we can do that, we need to remove this piece of material here. This is just held on with an adhesive pad. And just pull that one to the side so it's out of the way. And then there's another one just down the bottom here. Which you can use a prying tool just to get some purchase on. And what that will reveal is the screw hole that we need to uh, get to to undo this storage unit here. And that's just another Phillips screw, so just use your Phillips screwdriver. Undo that. Remove the screw. Now that is a different size screw to the others, just put that to one side carefully. And then you'll find what you'll be able to do is just gently lift up the storage module. And then once it's raised up from the board, about a centimetre, just pull it straight back and it'll eject from the socket. Now what we have here is a standard uh, 2280 uh, SSD, an NVMe SSD, and then it's connected to this metal heatsink, which just keeps things a little bit cool and also helps to protect it. So what we need to do is just gently pull these two apart. There shouldn't be much resistance to this. There we go, that's come apart. So you can see we've got a thermal pad here, and then this is our SSD. Now I've actually already upgraded mine, which is why it's showing as a 500 gig unit. Um, but just to show you what you would do is take your old one out, take your new one and place it in as so and just make sure that the notched hole on the top of the ssd lines up with the hole on the mount like so then what you need to do guys is just gently slot that back in so holding it up at a slight angle just get those teeth on the SSD to slot into that hole and then just make sure the adhesive pads are out of way and just gently push that down. You'll feel it nicely socketed and you'll see that the screw hole on the shim lines up with the threaded mount on the motherboard. And then just take that really small screw, screw that back in. And lastly, just make sure those adhesive pads cover up what they're supposed to cover up. And then lastly, now that we've finished working on the inside, you can take that battery connector and just gently relocate it. And then use one of your prying tools just to push that connector in. There we go. Now everything's reconnected guys, uh, our new SSD is installed, uh, so the only thing to do is to reassemble, which is an exact opposite of what we did to disassemble. So just take your, uh, your rear case, just slot it over, get it roughly located, check around all the sides to make sure it's roughly in the right place. And then with a small amount of pressure, just work your way around and get those clips to relocate. Again, don't push too hard because you do risk damaging the laptop. If you feel like one's not locating, just move on to the next one and then circle back to the one that you had trouble with. And eventually, everything will have clicked into place 
and then just reinstall your screws guys. So start with the three Phillips ones at the back. And then the two torque screws at the front. And then lastly, you just need to reinstall your rubber strip. Now this on the underside at either end does have a little nodule that locates into nodules on the uh, chassis. Now you might find it stretched slightly if you were a bit rough when you were pulling it out. The easiest thing I found is just to work it back and forth until it settles back in. Now if you find the adhesive isn't working anymore, uh, what you can do is just add a couple of drops of uh, contact adhesive or super glue to the bottom of the rubber strip or into the channel and then just quickly apply that strip back and you should have no problems. And there you have it guys, the laptop is now upgraded with more storage than it had before. Uh, the only other thing you will need to do is reinstall the Microsoft Windows OS or whatever OS you're using. Uh, you can find a link in the video description to my video where I show you how to do this. Uh, it's fairly easy, you just need to go to Microsoft's website and download the media creation tool, then use a USB stick to create a bootable media, install it into the laptop, power it back on, and you should be taken through the setup process. And there you have it guys, one upgraded laptop. Thanks for watching.